Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how to make a meme type maker where we load a picture into our app, we might adjust the picture, and then we save the picture. So, we're going to do that in Adobe Animate using Zim. Okay, let's take a look at the Zim site now, zimjs.com. You'll recall that we could go to the code section here and find the Zim Shim. Our previous tutorials all showed you how to do that, or we worked through that, certainly in the beginning ones. Uh, and we, uh, Zim is built on CreateJS, and Cre uh, Adobe Animate exports to CreateJS. So that's how all of this works. Let's go to Adobe Animate now. There we are. And we did our last coding one was a Zim 6 on components. So why don't we pop that open and we'll just do a little cheat here. So once we've got this one, we will file save as, and that way we don't have to worry about uh, loading the template in and all that kind of stuff. We've seen that in the other, in the previous ones. We actually are on tutorial eight. The, the last tutorial was more of an exploration on what types of things can be made in Flash and Zim, a historical look as well to this, uh, this guy. Dan Zen, <laughs> aka Dr. Abstract. This one we will call Loader. And so Zim08 Loader, sorry, that's really small, I'm sure. And we'll pull up an F9 for our console, our, our coding page here, sorry, our actions panel. And let's make that a little bit bigger so we can see. Oh, not that, this bigger. Control plus 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 plus. Oh, that's not working. Um, control scroll wheel. Okay, there we go. Hello, little numbers at the side. I see you there. <laughs> um, if we want to bring in a picture from the user's computer or their mobile device, then we simply say new... Uh, well, watch this. I, I've just realized something. A const loader is equal to a new loader. You see how I've typed that? Loader with a capital L. And I put the round brackets and flash or Adobe Animate is dropping the capital L to match that. That's what was going on the last uh, time we coded together. And I thought I was making errors. And I said, I'd never, I never call this with a, a capital letter. When I rewatched the videos, I realized that was what was doing. So I will often name a variable the lowercase version of the class name. And it appears that since I've already typed that, uh, Adobe Animate is thinking I want to use it again. And so it's dropping my capital L to... Well, I don't know. I'll we'll have to watch that. We'll see. Anyway, there's a new loader dot center on the stage. <laughs> uh, great. So that will give us what's called a loader. And we'll see that. Why don't we have a look? We've saved this, haven't we? Uh, yeah, we did. Okay, control enter. And there's our loader, which then allows us to go pick a picture. Say that one. But we ha have not captured the event to say once the picture has loaded. So we get, we get our loader. You can customize this however you want. Um, now let's see what that will uh, do when we capture, capture the event. So now we can say loader.on. Uh, kind of loaded, I think it is. Loaded, comma, call this arrow function. And in the arrow function, we're going to collect the event object. So this is the event object. <laughs> That is the event object. What, what's the event object called E, or that we uh, name E, and we often will get E dot target, for instance, or if it's a mouse, a frame dot on key down, we would get E dot key code, and here we can get E dot bitmap. So what we can say is E dot bitmap. That's uh, the last bitmap that is uploaded, or last picture that is up uploaded. Dot center. And let's put a dot drag on that as well. Okay, so we collect whatever the bitmap is, is loaded. By the way, if multiple images have been uploaded, then we can collect e dot bitmaps. There's also ways to collect other types of data, like um, text and sound as well. But anyway, pictures are usually the things that we want. And we might want to stage dot update just in case there as well. We are potentially moving to a situation where after each event happens, 
we call an automatic upload, but we're considering that. The problem is anytime you duplicate up, up stage.updates, oh, not an automatic upload, an automatic update. Um, if you duplicate uh, stage.updates too many times, it can just cause extra processing and, and slow things down. Uh, but on the other hand, it's sometimes annoying to remember to have to stage.update if you see something different. So once we've uploaded this and put it on the stage, Unless we stage.update, this happens later. Unless we stage.update, we won't automatically see it. Why is that giving me a red dot there? Did I press that by accident? Yeah, okay, that's some sort of debugger. All right, so we go control enter, and now we've got the loader, and are you ready? Bum, bum, bum. We upload the picture, and hey, there it is on our stage. Hello. <laughs> oh, uh, one thing to watch is it appears that the loader is still there, which probably means we could use the same code to upload some other picture. Ah, there's that one. So now we've got two pictures uploaded, uh, or we could upload multiple ones at the same time, but we haven't handled that yet. Uh, we probably want to get rid of the loader once we've added the picture on there. But did you see how easy that was? And that gets us a picture inside of our, um, our app. So right in here, we would say loader dot remove from or uh, dispose. Okay, so remove from is if we want to use it again, we might want to use it again. Dispose is uh, that we get rid of it from memory, etc. So shall we try? Control enter, and here we have our loader. We upload something, pop. We, ah, yeah. Okay, that's gone. So the next task is, well, I mean, we haven't figured out what we're going to do to make it this our own. We could draw with a pen on it. We could crop it. We could rotate it or scale it, etc. cetera. Um, we could add text messages to it, uh, et cetera. And then once we do that, we would then want to, uh, maybe we want to add a button will be a save button when we add that in here too. So a new button. Sorry for my typing. The label of that label is save. Oh, in quotes. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, squiggly brackets. So there is, we're jumping directly to a label using the default width and height, or we could put in a width and a height comma and then the label save. We will, what should we do with this? We've already put the picture on there. Let's position it then. Dot pose, uh, say 50 comma 50 from the right comma bottom. Like so, how does that look? And there we go. Oh, we'll want to tap on that as well. So let's drop this down. You can see it a little bit better. Dot pose going right inside of here. Uh, what did I hit? I hit the insert or something. Then we can dot tap. Tap. So tap is a short chainable method that allows us to pass in an arrow, arrow function here and then do what we want when we tap it. For now, let's just uh, store this. I guess we can store this in a, a const here. Const pick is equal to that. So that's our bitmap. And since this returns the bitmap and this returns a bitmap, that still gets stored in here. That's what chainable methods do. They return the object they're on. This is the object and we're storing it in pick. So we've got a pick. And when we tap, let's just try deleting it for now. Pick dot dispose. And then a stage dot update because this happens later once we once we tap. So you ready to try now? Control enter. We get our loader. Boop. We load a picture. <laughs> These are kind of all the same, aren't they? There's our picture. Oh, did you see the button? But uh, one thing, when we start to drag that, the button goes to the bottom, but we can deal with that. I'm gonna hit save, boop, and the picture's gone. So that shows that we have access to the picture. It's not really what we wanna do. Uh, the other thing is, if we don't want that picture to come up to the top, when we drag it, we can say, uh, on top, colon, false, like that. 
so now it won't come up onto the top. So let's try that. Control enter. Hopefully you guys are having fun out there. We upload the picture. And we'll try that one. There it is. Now when I drag this, note that it it didn't come up on top. Bop. However, we do want to save. I was just thinking about another thing to do with drag. I'm not sure if you're interested, but let's go to a 500. I noticed that these are almost the same width by default as our stage, 1024. I'm going to try 500 by 500 just to show you something. And let's say on the drag that we would say surround. So surround is the way to say that the picture is going to be bigger than our, our uh, boundary. Okay, so surround true. I think in the last one we talked about the surround because the Dan Zen Museum that we, I was showing you, the Dan Zen map, surrounded the window and we could drag and snap it. And I think I said it was something like outside did that, but it's actually a surround parameter in the drag. And then we can also say uh, slide, colon true, and slide snap, colon true. Uh, one other important thing to do is what is the boundary? And so the boundary is the stage or S here. Okay, so S is the stage. I should write a couple things up here. One is we are in Zim-08, I think, yeah. Dash, and this one was called loader, like that, so that we have a comment there. And we can also add the comments that we are given the F for frame, the S for stage, and we're given the width uh, for uh, width, or W for width, and H, can you guess, <laughs> for height. Okay, you can also use these very, oh, uh, this is actually stage width, and this one is not four, but stage height. Okay, so you're also given these variables in Adobe Animate in the um, with Zim Shim. Initially, we had been using these variables for these, and they do read well. In the latest version, oh, H, capital H, in the latest version of Zim, Zim version Zim01, we introduced these uh, single letter variables for frame, stage, width, and height. So I guess we're starting to use them. We'll see how it goes. These ones read better, but once you get used to it, the the short ones are kind of nice to use. All right, so we're stage updating. That's where that comes from. We're setting the boundary to the stage. That's where that comes from. And now watch what the effect of this is. Are you ready? We go Control Enter. And first of all, we've got a smaller stage. So there's our smaller stage. We oh, where'd our loader go? Oh, am I getting an error? F12. Uh. Yeah, okay, slide. So what do we do with slide? Forgot a comma. So comma, 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 comma. And we go control enter. There's our upload pick, which we press and we upload the pick. And here's the pick, watch this. So check that out. So now it stays within, within our frame here. Isn't that cool? So that's what I was showing you with the, the Dan Zen front at Dan Zen. We have a big map and it all stays within our frame. We can kind of throw it, slide it a little bit too. Okay, or we can delete it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Bye bye. <laughs> I was feeling a little claustrophobic there, so why don't we set it to 700, 700. Okay. Great, but how do we save it? That's that's the question. So we have this button. When we tap, we don't want to dispose it. No, rather we want to save it. So we would say uh, the stage dot, or no, loader. That's the name of our loader, dot save. And then we say, what, what container do we want to save? So this is interesting, because if we say the stage, guess what else is on the stage? The save button. If we say the picture, I can't remember. I think that probably works, but that's not really what we're gonna to wanna to save in the end. We wanna save the picture plus some text on top, if it's a meme maker, for instance. Um, 
I guess as a simple example, when we load the picture in, we have an on top of false, great, but right here, why don't we add a new label? And we can say, um, wow, great. And we could specify a font, etc., and a color. What color will that be? That will be default black. So we probably want um, to specify a color. So here's the size. We want it to be big to 30 or maybe 50, 40, I don't know, something like that. We have on PC, we have an impact font, but we don't have the impact font on a Mac. So just watch that. But no, I'll just use impact for now because it looks very meme-like. We can load in fonts. Uh, we load in fonts with uh, load assets, or if we're using Rosim without Adobe Animate, we can load it in through the frame call, load in fonts to bring in custom fonts. You can bring in Google fonts, um, but often we load our own fonts. Anyway, this will do us for now. And then I wanna make this white like so, and we will dot pose this. I'll drop it down so you can read it a little bit better. We will dot pose this on, let's see, zero from the center. Uh, how about 100 from the top? And then we say center here, center and top like so. So what that will do is it will make a label, our meme or whatever. Wow, great. That's not, uh, that's not too great. I am uploading a dragon. So why don't I say dragon? It's actually weird. It's neon lips eating dragon. Neon lips eating dragon. And I might have to make that smaller. If we want, we can scale this to the stage as well, a certain percentage, and then we don't worry about um, what size that is. But let's see how it looks now. Okay, control enter. And we choose upload picture, neon, neon lips, neon lips eating dragon. Okay, so you, you see how we've got that there. If we just save the picture, it wouldn't save that. If we save the stage, it will save the picture. It will save this, this text, but it will also save the save button. So we have two choices. One, we could add the things that we wanna to save to a container and then say then save the container so we're, we're about to save we have to say what to save here uh, or we could save the stage s for the stage and just temporarily remove the button so uh, that would be const button is equal to that button we could say button dot remove from like so pop actually once we save it do we want to save it again? Maybe it depends on what we're doing, but that, that would remove the button uh, before the loader saves it. And then button dot add to would remove it back again. <laughs> Little trick. I think that I think that works. I don't think we have to update the stage in between. I can't remember for sure. But there's, you know, the simple thing would just be save the stage and it would save everything that we've got. Let's see if this works though. Okay, so we go control enter. Uh, let me just close down some of my other ones that we've got going on there. There's the upload pick. We choose our pick. Neon lips eating dragon. Great. Why don't we bring that down a bit? Oh, <laughs> you know, bring it up a bit. I, 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 it's just, if I bring it down that, it, it's still touching here. Anyway, I could have put that up there. It would have been nicer. Uh, anyway, good enough. And we hit save. Uh, at which point, there it is, saved. So that just downloaded it. We can specify a prefix as well to be able to save it in a way that we can do random numbers. But let's uh, open that up. There it is. So this is the saved PNG. You can also specify a JPEG. And look at that, huh? Neon lips eating dragon. No button, because we removed the button. That's a picture on the user's computer that they can share or on their mobile devices. Works perfectly fine on mobile, easy to upload from their uh, their camera roll. And uh, then when you save it, saves it back again, you know, to somewhere. So isn't that cool? Wow, a meme maker. There's the save button back. Why don't we just tie that up a touch and only make it 50 and that will look better for us. What do you say? Uh, anything else you wanna do? I mean, we could, Obviously, we'd want to let people type that in, and we have a thing called a text input or a new uh, text input, so we could do that instead and type in the text input, but that's just, yeah, you know, maybe we could do that. Yeah, 
I guess. <laughs> Here it is. Neon. So there we go. That's up a little bit higher. I actually chose a different picture too. There's different ways to scale this too. And if we hit save, anyway, let's see. Oh, we want to see it eating though. There we go. Save. And there it is again with our picture, Neon Lips Eating Dragon. All right, what if we wanted to type in, uh, instead of a label here, we can comment that out. And in here we say a new text input. I can't remember uh, size colon 50. Uh, how big do we have? Down? We had the other one at 30, but it looked a little bit small. Comma, and then font colon uh, impact. We'll watch it on Mac. Impact and squiggly bracket on that. And then we want to we position this and make it draggable. I haven't dragged a text input in a while. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but we can try it. Um, let's see. It is dot center. Why don't we center it? Uh, we should put some default text in there. So text is enter text. All right, so let's see. Can you see all that? Drop it down. Text is enter text. Size is 50. Font is impact. Note the difference of what we've done. We've done gone to the Zim Duo technique with the squiggly brackets here so that we can access any of them. I'm not sure of the order. Label I've used before a fair bit, and I wanted to access each of the parameters and I knew the order of them. So I didn't bother going to Zim Duo for these ones. But uh, for the text input, it's a newer component. I don't know it as well. And so I've, uh, I hope that those are correct. We'll center it for now. I won't bother dragging it just yet, but let's see if this works. Control Enter. By the way, when we do these tutorials, we've been working in Zim for a long time. Uh, usually everything goes fairly well. Oh, there's Enter Text. <laughs> nice capital letters. Note the descenders. Uh, do we even have descenders? No, we don't. So we'd have to shift that a little bit because the font is... Uh, it's raised up for impact. Different fonts have different sort of base things and impact is all capital letters. Anyway, uh, eating, it looks like it's actually right off the eating dragon. But uh, what about that? You know, there's our drag. Yeah, that doesn't look very good because we've got a background of white. So maybe that's not the best way to do it. We can make a, uh, we forgot the color of the font. First of all, let's handle the shifting of it, the color and the background transparent. Um, before we go any further, let's also hit the save and just have a, a look and see what that save. I've, I've, I've never tried to save this. Good, the cursor's uh, not sure. Remember that cursor that's popping up there? That's an actual display object. So it may be, okay, yeah, if I click off it, then we don't see the cursor and therefore it doesn't save it. So that's probably okay. So what we need to do is shift it down uh, we could make it a little bit longer and center center align it as well so that it starts in the center and just sort of centers it. We could probably make it so it's draggable. I've, I've never tried. I have on various meme makers made kind of more like a panel with text and then you submit the text and then it pops up. Do you want to see that? Um, let's see if I go to Zim and look up examples and search for control F meme. That's one meme maker. Here's a second one. I've done more than just showing here. There's other meme makers, I think, kind of like stuff on um, CodePen perhaps. But here's the first one we did. Please ignore, it was quite some time ago. Uh, we have this bar right here that sort of helps us with everything. We can upload a pick. Oh, drop pick or upload. So you can drop the pick onto there too. There it is. Nice. Note that I can drag that around. This one I've got uh, here for sizing, or we could pinch zoom to kind of size. Uh, the spinning would turn it. There's also layers and, and slanting and stuff. But if I go to text, I can type some words. So what were the words again? Um, it was knee, neon lips eating dragon. So this is called a text area right there. And so it's a little bit different than the text field we were doing. And then when we hit the plus, is it? Ah, 
There it is, and I better reduce that in size. Neon Lips Eating Dragon. Okay, you see how that works? And then we go to save it, which is uh, the link over here. Oh, let's reduce, so I'm clicking on the picture and reducing the size of the picture a little bit so we can see a bit more of these neon lips eating dragon. And uh, we can reduce that there, so you get the idea. All right, and we hit save, and that saves our neon lips eating dragon. So why don't we leave it at that? I mean, that gives you an idea of the type of thing we can do. I think that, that is quite beautiful as a meme maker and as a, you know, a 20 minute tutorial on, wow, uh, good luck. I mean, isn't that amazing? We, we've just been able to upload a picture. We could draw on top of it instead. Um, we could collage, make multiple pictures, collage them, etc., and then easily save out our container, whatever's holding that. You saw the little trick there. So in this one, I think we put all of the stuff that we were making in a container. And then when we hit save, we just save that either that or we just hit the whole bar here. This whole bar should be in a container as well. So we could probably easily hide the bar, show, print it or save it, and then show the bar again. I am Dr. Abstract, founder of Zim, and you're welcome to come and say hi on Slack or Discord, zimjs.com slash Slack, zimjs.com slash Discord. We'd love to hear you. Hopefully you enjoyed that and can see how you could use that in your Adobe Animate projects. Uh, all the best. Have a good night. Cheers. Or day. <laughs>